Hi everyone, meteorologist Joe Chaffee, SNS Storm Chasing, meteorologist Joe .com, weatherlongisland.com. So let's go through what's going to be uh, going on today. We have a, a, a little uh, weather front that's moved on through here. Uh, it's very weak. You can pick it out right there uh, on the uh, GFS model for this morning, and there really isn't too much going on uh, out to the west. And as we uh, move forward in time, we're going to uh, probably see a bit of a warm front try and develop. Now, the GFS for some, does bubble up some showers and thunderstorms for later this afternoon and this evening. You know, I kind of think that if that happens, it'll, they'll be isolated in nature. Um, I suppose it's possible that uh, given all the daytime heating, we're going to see that um, one of those storms could uh, possibly, one or two of those storms could possibly get strong. But they should be widely scattered, and for most of you, you won't see anything. Now, on Saturday morning, we have a, a warm front that is uh, settling, setting up right there, right overhead. This little high goes by to our north, so it creates a bit of an onshore flow for areas like northern New Jersey, Long Island, uh, the Hudson Valley, New York City, and, and for uh, southern New England. But uh, for areas south of there, east, uh, most of uh, the southern parts of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, down to Maryland, Delaware, uh, into Virginia. This is all in the warm sector, so uh, they're not going to have an issue. And he, the uh, next cold front is, uh, by tomorrow morning, is moving through Chicago and extends down uh, into Texas. And there'll be some showers and thunderstorms uh, likely with that. But as far as uh, when that front comes through, it's not going to be uh, coming through here uh, until late Saturday night or early Sunday morning. So the daytime Saturday is just going to be a, a very warm to hot and humid uh, day everywhere. Um, temperatures will be back up upper 80s uh, to uh, low and mid 90s across central and southern New Jersey. Possibly a couple of records could go by the wayside. I, I'll have to look at the specific numbers. Uh, today, there's a possibility of some record highs in some places. Uh, most of the numbers for record highs today are pretty high, like 98 at Newark, so it may not get there, and 94 in New York City, so they may come close. Now, this is 2 a.m. Sunday morning, and here we are now at 8 a.m. Um, Sunday morning. So at this point, uh, the cold front is uh, just about on the coast. You can see it right there. See where the isobars kind of pinch like this? in that V shape, that's where the front is. And then we have uh, some showers ahead of it. Now, if we time this front to come through at 8 a.m., it's likely that the showers will be done by then. Uh, the green is uh, indicative of the measurable precip that would have fallen in the six hours before that. So it's more than likely that at this point, uh, any showers and storms will probably be like this and then moving very quickly to the east. and any leftover clouds will give way to mostly sunny skies fairly quickly because this high just builds right on in. And it looks like we have a shot of uh, less humid, slightly cooler air to take us into Monday and Tuesday. Weather looks pretty reasonable. And then we have uh, for Wednesday, and the model, the uh, GFS is a little faster with this and not as well defined as it was in prior runs, but we have another cold front that a week one that is coming through uh, for Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Uh, you know, the timing of these fronts coming through during the late night, early morning hours probably means that with that one, there won't be much in the way of showers. Now, it's showing showers uh, in areas near the Great Lakes. So some of this is probably a little bit of, uh, a little bit of overrunning that's occurring with some lake effect involved uh, in areas well to the north. But when we uh, move through time, uh, the high builds on in. Now, there are some sh showers. Looks like maybe a little bit of a wave being indicated on the front for the daytime Wednesday, and uh, we'll show you that. So here's here's the front that just kind of stalls out a little bit and like that, and we'll finish putting on the feature. So there's the cold front. You know, here we have, you know, nice. it's a nice little high that's building in here, this, this high up here. Uh, so that's going to, uh, bring in eventually some drier air um, with that. So as we uh, go through uh, Thursday into Friday, that high builds in. And this is a nice little shot of cool air for later next week. So I think you're going to notice it uh, for sure. 
um, with regards to temperatures, maybe 50s at night, probably 70s during the day. And as we go through the longer range, that high kind of settles out offshore, um, we start the return flow. And then it, it, there's another front for early next week. There's another front that follows for later next week. So we're in this, ba this wash, rinse, repeat pattern uh, that's going to go on for the next two weeks or so. Really don't see too much uh, in the way of change regarding the overall upper air pattern. So if we take a look at that and we'll widen it out for you um, so you can get a better view. And take this view here for North America. Now, you know, we're starting to see some things going on up in Canada uh, longer term uh, that would mean for, um, you know, these cool air masses that are going to get prof pro progressively cooler and cooler with each one, one as uh, this, this whole, you know, starting to see vortexes form up in northern Canada uh, with some stronger systems dropping down uh, to the south. Um, as we go through time, and I, you know that's kind of the way it's supposed to be. This is the long-term view here, with a, a fairly deep vortex for this time of year forming in Hudson's Bay, uh, Big Ridge to the west, broad trough here in the east. I mean, I don't know if that's going to going to actually happen that way. Uh, models, can, you know, as usual, not just in the winter time they do this, but even in the summertime, you know, they advertise uh, these. Uh, pattern changes uh, or attempts for pattern changes late in the period where uh, they wind up not happening. So the model's been kind of doing this for a little while, uh, but you know, if we were to have a setup like this, uh, it would probably mean for some you know, invasions of cooler air starting to come down. Um, and also, by the way, uh, dry, I mean, for the most part. The, the trough is very, very broad. There's no um, there's nothing here that would suggest that any change to the long-term pattern of it being very dry. Now, I want to uh, take a look at the tropics real quick because we are seeing uh, some activity going on there. And I want to start with the upper air and, and go back a little bit. Let's go back uh, to the beginning of the period. And, you know, we've got this ridge in the east, and you see that Atlantic ridge. Now, what happens is that the Atlantic Ridge splits, and this is something the models have been telegraphing for a long time. Here's the upper high, here's another upper high, and there's uh, a bit of a weak, there's a bit of a weakness right in between, right in here. So any tropical systems that develop are going to want to take a course west-northwest and then northwest and then through this hole that exists uh, along and just east of 60 west, uh, basically following the path that Hurricane Gaston followed, and I, I don't think that's unreasonable to expect. In fact, over time, uh, with the westerlies, the strong jet stream pattern that sets up uh, in the east, um, you can see it here. <clears throat> you know, you've got these very strong westerlies all across the Atlantic. So, and and this right here is a tropical system. So anything that forms is going to want to uh, again recurve and go out. Um, unless it were way, way to the south or very, very weak. If it was very weak, there would be a chance that the weak circulation would respond to the low-level winds and move um, further you know, westward. But you know, right now, uh, I would say that anything that forms out here is going to go uh, in that particular direction. And speaking of which, uh, we will look at the satellite view here, and, and you can see, let me move myself up to the top, we have uh, three trop three weather systems. This one close to the coast um, doesn't uh, look like there's uh, that it's going to develop. Although you know you got to watch it when you start to see clouds and convection. It's kind of persisted here for a couple of days in the Bahamas, but nothing showing signs of development. This wave has really not done very much. Uh, sometimes it has a look on the satellite where it wants to do something over the last few days, but uh, that hasn't happened. But the one that's furthest to the east here. Uh, down uh, now moving over across the uh, central tropical Atlantic. I think this one has a uh, a pretty good shot. You've got um, curvature uh, right in there. You've got a lot of convection going on. There seems to be some kind of a core uh, of, of uh, showers and storms that's developing. And I think this system stands a pretty good chance of developing into a tropical depression. But again, with what we showed you on the upper air, it'll probably move northwest and then eventually go north and then northeastward 
and and goodbye. So um, that would be the plan of attack at uh, at this point regarding that particular system. With regards to severe weather, there really isn't too much going on on the radar this morning. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center, I'm showing you uh, for tomorrow uh, the with the front approaching. You see where the slight risk of severe is well to the west and marginal risk of severe going into uh, western Pennsylvania, a little bit of a slight risk there and into western New York and marginal risk into south central New York. We're at a general risk for thunderstorms here, but nothing uh, that's going to cause any problems. So that pretty much sums it up. Uh, don't forget uh, uh, SNS Storm Chasing. Uh, check out their website and their Facebook page, meteorologistjoechaffee.com, weatherlongisland.com uh, for all the latest uh, goings on. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube account and uh, check out all the weather videos. It's a free subscription, and uh, I would appreciate very much if uh, you join me there.